The Tank is both written and directed by New Zealand filmmaker Scott Walker. He previously wrote and directed The Frozen Ground starring Nicolas Cage, Vanessa Hudgens, and John Cusack. That movie came out in 2013, so it's taken 10 years for his second feature film to come out. I really hope we won't be waiting another decade for his next movie. For me, The Tank has a lot of what worked really well for a horror director like Neil Marshall in his earlier movies. In other words, I have high hopes for whatever comes next from Scott Walker. This dark and gritty creature feature works surprisingly well in most ways, so genre fans should make a point of seeking it out. If you can, then I'd recommend watching it in a movie theater. However, it's also a solid watch digitally, which is how I watched it. The Tank opens in select theaters on April 21st and digitally on April 25th, 2023. Details Director, Scott Walker Writer, Scott Walker Cast, Lucianne Buchanan, Matt Whalen, Zara Nosbaum, Regina Hegeman, Jack Berry, Holly Shervey You'll also see a few supporting actors in The Tank. Some just in brief appearances. Others will suffer seriously when confronted with the creature at the heart of this story. It does get quite brutal, the Academy Award-winning special effects supervisor and creative director Richard Taylor created the creature effects. Of course, he didn't do this all on his own. His team at Peter Jackson's VFX Studio Weta Workshop worked with him on this. The result is as you'd expect. The family at the center of the tank consists of the mother, Jules, portrayed by Lucianne Buchanan. You may recognize her from the Netflix series The Night Agent, where she plays a very different role. The father, Ben, is played by Matt Whalen, The Luminaries. And yes, both actors are from New Zealand, just like the director. Family in the Tank inherits a remote and long-abandoned coastal property in Oregon. Unfortunately, there's a reason why it was both abandoned and kept secret. Once the family, mother, father, and young daughter, moves in, they awaken a horde of ferocious and deadly creatures beneath the house. From the very beginning of the tank, this horror movie has a lot going for it. In fact, I gotta distinct the conjuring vibe as there's a focus on a loving family who moves to a new home where things turn scary. And pretty damn fast, of course, the conjuring is all about the paranormal and demonic, and the tank definitely is not. It's a creature feature and proudly so, maybe it's also that the story is set in the 1970s. This is when the happy, but financially struggling, fiercely protective of its environment. While Jules delves deeper into the secrets hidden within the abandoned house, Ben's actions accidentally unleash a dangerous force that threatens to consume them all. What lies beneath the surface of this serene paradise, and can the couple survive the sinister forces they have unwittingly unleashed? In the year 1978, Ben Adams and his wife Jules are bequeathed an enigmatic coastal property shrouded in secrecy. Uninhabited for four decades, the property boasts of an exquisite private cove and beach that only adds to its enigmatic allure. As the couple begins to unravel the mysteries surrounding the property, they unwittingly awaken a dormant entity. The beauty and tranquility of the place leave the family with the nagging question, why was this property kept a secret for so long? While Jules rummages through the house looking for answers, Ben goes to repair the buried water tank, not knowing that in doing so he is unleashing a long dormant creature, fiercely protective of its environment. After mysteriously inheriting an abandoned coastal property, Ben and his family accidentally unleash an ancient, long dormant creature that terrorized the entire region including his own ancestors for generations. Ben and his wife Jules are in for a surprise when they inherit an abandoned coastal property that Ben's recently deceased mother never told them about. Untouched for 40 years, the house looms like an eerie relic over land which includes a stunning private cove and beach. The film has left many impressions and reviews. There were audience reviews that. Well, this was some fun out of good old-fashioned monster horror generics from the 1980s, made on a survivable budget and a limited cast. The sets and choice of locations in the Arcadian coastal shores of Oregon really attracts my mind, and the UR forests may hide inhabitants still unknown to man, it's an intense thrill, 
well filmed and the use of light and shadow is merely perfect, cast delivers, and the exploration-like story sits well in the cinema seat, the ULO gives you the vibe of the thing horror, and the musical score carries the fright very well, so put on your horse goggles and head on into the tank, a good rooster for the traditional beast horror. A recommend from the grumpy old man. I was genuinely entertained by the storyline and surprisingly impressed by the overall outcome of the movie, my rating of the tank lands on a 7 out of 10 stars. Above is the audience's evaluation of the movie, what do you think? Visually then I have to say that I was rather impressed with the effects in the tank. The creature designs were really interesting and looked good and realistic. The sounds, however, felt sort of out of place for such amphibious creatures. But hey, I get it, it makes the creatures seem all the more frightening and menacing, if you enjoy a good old-fashioned creature feature, then give the tank a go. The acting performances in the movie were good. It was a relatively small cast ensemble, and thus more pressure were on the cast to carry the movie, and they did that with grace. I was especially impressed with the performance of leading actor Matt Whalen, playing Ben, because his performance in the movie was really good and realistic. The movie, and it is something that looks and feels like a good, old-fashioned creature feature. And it was that accomplishment that really worked for me. Plus the fact that writer and director Scott Walker also managed to gradually build up the suspense and dread throughout the course of the movie, slowly but surely piling up the layers. Well, color me impressed, I had the opportunity to sit down and watch the 2023 horror movie from writer and director Scott Walker, and of course I did so given my interest in the horror genre. I hadn't heard anything about the tank prior to watching it, so all I knew was that it was a horror movie of sorts. The storyline in the tank is pretty straightforward, not to mention riveting and entertaining. Writer and director Scott Walker managed to put together a rather enjoyable script for The Tank is a new horror movie with a strong creature feature focus. And yes, the actual creatures are shown exactly as much as they should. That means you'll get to see them in shadows and glimpses at first, before getting a better look. The perfect way to build suspense and get the audience hooked. Also, make sure you stick around for the end credits. There is an end credit scene, which definitely opens up the possibility of more movies in this universe. For now, you can check out this original movie for a really solid creature feature. Continue reading our The Tank Movie review below. Find it in select theaters on April 21st, and on VOD from April 25th, 2023. The movie ends here. Remember to click like and follow to watch the next movies. Goodbye and see you again.